as our attention has been focused on Gaza and now Lebanon over the past year, the West Bank has continued to be a very active front in Israel's war against terrorism. Um, there have been multiple attempts, unfortunately some successful, to carry out terrorist attacks in and from the West Bank. And so the Israeli military has been forced to operate there as it has been operating elsewhere over the past year. Um, and so, yes, there are quite often um, various operations of the sort that is depicted in that video where forces will go into a city in a pinpoint manner, um, take out a terrorist if they can, arrest him, um, and if not, eliminate him on the scene. Um, and this is viewed as part of a broader campaign to ensure that Hamas's attempts to further inflame tensions in the West Bank, which it has expressed the desire to do, do not bear fruit, and that Israel is able to maintain some degree of calm, even as the scene does appear to be rather restless at this time. Israel's campaign against Hezbollah over the past few weeks has been stunningly effective. I think it caught the terrorist organization, the Iranian proxy group, by complete surprise. We have essentially decimated the entire leadership of Hezbollah, um, we have significantly depleted its capabilities as well as its missile arsenal, which of course is its strongest strategic asset. Um, and what we see is that the organization itself, Hezbollah, is in disarray. Um, it is a combination of having lost a significant portion of its leadership, um, a significant number of its operatives in the field, and a large amount of its own capabilities and arsenal that's created a situation where they are now calling for a ceasefire. Uh, which is rather ironic since it has been Israel that over the past year has been calling for a ceasefire as its communities in the north have been bombarded on a daily basis by Hezbollah, but now it appears as though Israel has the upper hand. Well, for years, the concern has been that Hezbollah has been planning a mass infiltration and massacre in northern Israel, similar to what happened in the south of the country on October the 7th. And we now have evidence that that was exactly the plan. Um, the IDF has uncovered an attack tunnel that extended from Lebanese territory into Israel um, that was to be used for that purpose. We know that several of the commanders who have been specifically targeted by Israel um, were engaged in advanced plans to carry out exactly such an attack. Um, and it appears as though this limited Israeli incursion in southern, in southern Lebanon um, has been rather effective in staving off this very nefarious plan to carry out a massacre similar to October 7th, um, and we can only hope that Hezbollah's capabilities will continue to be depleted by that action. Hezbollah does still have formidable capabilities. It still is bombarding communities of northern Israel on a daily basis. We're seeing dozens upon dozens of rockets and missiles fired into Israeli territory every single day. One wonders how any other country in the world would deal with such a situation, but Israel is doing whatever it can to specifically target Hezbollah commanders, operatives, and infrastructure in order to spare Lebanese civilians to the extent possible. Um, as a matter of fact, both the Israeli military and the Israeli prime minister himself have called on Lebanese civilians to vacate those areas in which they know Hezbollah to be present. Um, of course, Hezbollah, similar to Hamas, has been utilizing civilian infrastructure and civilian uh, areas to conceal and, uh, and, and serve as cover for its activity for years. Um, but the Israeli military has been very clear that it has no goal of uh, detrimentally affecting the civilian population, has no desire to hit civilians, and to the extent that there are Hezbollah individuals, um, forces, and infrastructure in the area, those are places that Lebanese civilians must vacate in order to spare their own lives. There are many different uh, views and many different reports as to what Israel's response to the unprecedented Iranian missile barrage might be. Um, we know that it will be harsh. Um, these are the discussions that are ongoing with the U.S. administration about what that harshness might look like and what the scope of such a response might be. Um, initially, as you said, there had been reports that Israel was considering striking either Iran's military facilities associated with its nuclear program um, or its oil refineries, which of course are a key component of its economy. Um, what we understand is that those two options are at present off the table and Israel is looking to target high quality uh, military infrastructure in Iran and perhaps senior commanders in the Iranian military. Um, that's not to say that Israel will not reserve for itself the option of pursuing those other targets in the future, 
Should Iran further escalate, which seems impossible at this point, but if Iran goes even further in escalating its assault on the state of Israel, um, then Israel may find itself with no choice but to target those facilities. And there are some who say that this is a, an assault uh, that will have to happen at some point. Israel will have no choice but to engage militarily against Iran's nuclear program, which of course poses an existential threat to the Jewish state. Um, and as it at the moment has the international legitimacy to respond to this unprecedented Iranian attack, this may be the moment in order to engage in such an act. We don't know whether that is actually in the offing. We'll have to see what the next week show. Here, where this is just a fraction of the uh, Hezbollah munitions pointed towards Israelis we found in the last week. Uh, you can see different types of rocket launchers, IEDs, uh, AK-47s, uh, RPGs, anti-tank missiles, uh, hornets, and those types of, of uh, uh, launchers. I remind you, we are operating in a local, uh, localized, targeted, precise operation in southern Lebanon, in those places where Hezbollah has been hiding for decades, these type of advanced missiles, these type of accurate missiles. I want you to look at this. This is a hornet. This is an advanced missile that was in southern Lebanon. I want you to imagine an Israeli family in northern Israel trying to have a dinner. And this missile that can fire up to five kilometers, uh, that has a laser beam, that can fire through a window and hit that family. Uh, I want you to imagine this threat. This is why we're operating in southern Lebanon. We're operating to make sure our civilians can come home. We're operating to make sure that uh, uh, these types of missiles are not pointed towards our civilians hundreds of meters from their homes. Today marks one year since Hezbollah opened the northern front against Israel. In an unprovoked attack, Hezbollah began firing at Israel. The heart of Hezbollah operations is in the Dachya. Dachya isn't just another area in Lebanon. Hezbollah itself treats it as a de facto military base. Hezbollah has closed off the Dachya area in Beirut and it controls who goes in and who goes out. In recent weeks, we have conducted precise airstrikes on a number of significant targets there. It was in the Dachya that we eliminated Hassan Nasrallah inside Hezbollah's headquarters underneath civilian buildings. It was in the Dachya that we destroyed a large stockpile of advanced surface to sea precision guided missiles. And it was in the Dachya that we destroyed weapons production facilities and struck Hezbollah intelligence headquarters underneath civilian buildings. The Dachya in Beirut is Hezbollah's stronghold.